So I've talked a bit in a couple of my other videos about how likely it is that Beelzebub is going to win his fight against Tesla for a variety of different reasons, but I really want to zero in on Tesla's side of the argument here because after learning about Beelzebub's backstory, I'm kind of on the fence now, but just to be clear and no pun intended, I'm purposefully trying to play devil's advocate here, right? In other words, this is not me trying to objectify to you that I am 100% certain that it will be Tesla who wins round 8, but after after everything that was revealed about Beelzebub in chapter 67, I could see how the narrative could actually push for Beelzebub losing here, and that's mainly what I'm gonna be talking about today, so let's just get into the video guys, we got a lot to talk about here. Alright, so from my understanding, it was very clear that the story wanted us to believe that Satan and Beelzebub are actually the same person, but it's just that Beelzebub has no control over when he taps in or out of his Satan form. And although the narrative tries to paint the picture, of Beelzebub being this cursed individual who was somehow randomly chosen and cursed by Satan, I think it was intentionally told that way to drive up the sense of tragedy because his entire backstory is essentially a tragedy, right? Because not only is he intrinsically a tragic character, but he was also surrounded by the deaths of his friends and cornered into solitude because of that, so you can see how him being cursed is like the cherry on top, it's just meant for us as the readers to sympathize with him even more. And it's important to remember that the idea of Satan himself is just a rumor to the other gods, right? I mean, according to Lucifer, he's just a superstition that a lot of the other gods simply believe, but it's not like there's anyone currently alive who's ever seen him, and this makes a lot of sense given that Satan only reveals himself when Beelzebub becomes close to anyone, so you can notice how the story conveniently avoids telling us why it's specifically Beelzebub who's cursed and not anyone else, or why hasn't Satan made his appearance well known to the public, because again, these are the kind of questions whose answers would take away from his backstory being as tragic as it was. Because it's important that we empathize with him to make that struggle over who we actually want to see win, Beelzebub or Tesla. But that doesn't mean we should just ignore these questions outright, so while it doesn't take away any of the tragedy we see to his character in chapter 67 for me personally, I still think it's important to remember who's the character we have in front of us because, in my opinion, I don't think it's some curse being put on him by some external entity. I think him and Satan are one. And this actually makes sense why Beelzebub wants to die instead of ever dispelling this so-called curse because it actually isn't a curse. It's something that is a part of who he is so while it is unfortunate that he is this way, I think even Beelzebub understands that by dying it would be the only way to finally defeat Satan because this isn't something that's separate from himself. And I've talked about this in a couple of my other videos on how I think there will eventually come a time in the fight where we end up seeing Tesla versus Satan. Satan, and given how we've been consistently getting Helheim lore ever since round 6, it just occurred to me how amazing it would be to finally move past this part in the story with the defeat of Satan himself, and it's not because I dislike anything about Helheim, that isn't the point I'm trying to make here. I just think it was only a matter of time until Satan was introduced somehow, but now seeing that he's ultimately one of the fighters for the gods, I'm not sure how to really feel about this, because as much as I'd believe Beelzebub was and is going to win round 8, it's almost hard to imagine that effectively also means Satan does too, and I'm sure the manga isn't 100% subjective to any religious frames of references or dogma, so I'm not trying to imply that Satan should and has to lose for the sole purpose of tradition, but if I'm gonna be honest, the story needs to do a really good job to convince me why Tesla loses here, I will say that much. And just to be clear, I'm speaking purely about the narrative, right? Because narratively speaking, it's the good guy who should always win, but but because we're talking about Satan, the ultimate bad guy here, the most evil of antagonists there could be in any work of fiction, then I'd say it almost wouldn't make sense for Satan to win for the sake of good storytelling, and for those of you who are thinking about Jack versus Heracles, I don't really think that even compares to this, right? I mean, Jack showed a human-like personality, he was even shown to be redeemable by the end of his fight as someone who's as much human as everyone else, so there was an honest effort on the story to make and illustrate Jack as someone likable. But because we're talking about Satan, a figure who's infamously and historically portrayed as the king of all evils in a variety of different literature, then I simply can't see how this relates to round 4. Maybe it does in concept, but round 8 is taking it on the extreme. I mean, just going back to the first and only line of dialogue that we get from Satan in chapter 67 when he's talking to Beelzebub, he says, Love is hatred, all those whom you love shall perish. So this should be as evil as it could get, and 
And this is why I'm anticipating a second backstory for Beelzebub because as many unanswered questions are left, there needs to be some kind of purpose to Satan in all of this. Actually, there doesn't need to be a purpose if he's going to be defeated along with Beelzebub anyway, but there definitely should be if Tesla loses. It has to be done in a way that makes sense. And I know I keep referring to Satan like he's this final endgame boss, but there's really honestly and nothing redeemable about him. That is the whole point to Satan as a character. He makes someone like Hajin or Jack feel so much more tame in comparison. And maybe that's because we got to see him kill Lilith and Beelzebub's friends firsthand, but it's the fact that he's purposefully waiting in the corner to ruin everything for him when it's at its absolute best for Beelzebub and someone else that is the key to all of this. Because we don't even know why Satan does this either, he just does it for no reason as far as we know. So there are so many unanswered questions about him, but questions that point him into being this absolute evil regardless. So if Beelzebub and Satan remain the same until the end of the fight, I think the fight could play out like it normally does for every human fighter and god. So like usual, we'll see Tesla and Beelzebub try to take each other's heads off, but as the fight goes on, I think they'll eventually form a bond over science or discovery maybe, and maybe this even causes Beelzebub to believe he's made a friend for the first time in a while, but this is where the fight should reach its climax. Beelzebub will eventually transform into Satan and kill Tesla for real now. Now, as for what happens next, I honestly couldn't say because Tesla feels almost unpredictable, right? And I guess that's because of his Voland. He's able to wield magic, so it's a combination of his intelligence and the impossible, so who knows? What if Tesla is somehow able to defeat Satan but separate him from Beelzebub in the process? Because if that were to happen, maybe the fight could continue and it'd make so much more sense for the story if Tesla loses to Beelzebub instead. Now, I know that's just an assumption as with everything in this entire video, but we do know for a fact that Beelzebub and Satan are the same being, so on the off chance we never see the curse dispelled, then I think the story's got a really heavy burden if it wants to reasonably give Satan the win here. But as I said at the start of the video and no pun intended, this whole video is just me playing devil's advocate for the sake of discussion, but I think there's already a strong case here for Satan losing to support why Tesla takes the round, so please let me know in the comments what you all think, I'm sure there's a lot of different opinions on this. But alright guys, this is where I'm gonna end the video with, thank you so much for watching. Like always, if you wanna see more Record of Ragnarok, then make sure you subscribe to stay updated, I'll be doing more here like always. But before I end the video, I wanna give a very special thanks to the channel's patrons, Iron Justin Nix EXP, Paranormal Beluga, Jedi Knight 104, and Ped Yuko. Thank you so much for the support guys, you have no idea how much it means to me, and like always, if you're interested, you can sign up too and get into the monthly Q&A I do here on the channel. I'll be posting the next one up sometime at the start of October, so from now until the end of September, feel free to consider joining. You'd also be helping me out a lot here in a massive way and get a special shout out like this in every single video. The link will be in the description below or you could just search it yourself at patreon.com slash izanami. But other than that guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, I would greatly appreciate it and feel free to comment down below what your thoughts are, anything you agreed or disagreed with, and yeah, have a great day.